Looks like Covid is uh, back on the uh, topic subject matter. Only had four roll ups in uh, 27 and a half hours. Not that I'm counting. Just happens to be that way. I remember it was uh, five o'clock when I was woken up rudely yesterday. Oh yeah, I forgot I didn't make coffee. She's black tea. I'm getting fed up with the uh, dumb cunt media at the moment. I really am. That's the fucking doing my head in. I'm talking about the news media, obviously. TV in general is uh, fucking run by dumb cunts. For dumb cunts. That's why you get all this shit like fucking uh, Big Brother. And, oh, fucking bullshit fucking cheap shit shows and I have an aversion to cheap shit TV of all descriptions now so uh, must point out uh, I do know Zone Ranger I didn't have it back then but I know it from the early emulator years and by early I mean the 486 era because uh, someone showed me a C64 em emulator on the, the new fascinating thing called the internet. Ah, bloody chair, stop fucking going down like a fucking uh, pensioner's cock. Stay up, get the fire green there. Hang on a minute. Yeah, anyway, the emulator years, as I was saying. And uh, someone showed me a DOS emulator for the C64. I think it was actually called C64S. Written by the same bloke who did uh, the C64 demo for the Amiga. You know, the one I've done all them videos for that no one fucking watched. Anyway, with perfect SID emulation. For an 8-bit DAC-based uh, 7 megahertz 16-bit computer. You need fucking gigahertz of CPU power to do uh, virtual analog synthesis on uh, digital systems. Which is a thing. It's just that uh, Monsieur Hakan Sundel, I don't know what country he's from, it's a bit disrespectful. He's a monumental coder anyway, he wrote that, he wrote SID player for the C64 and he also wrote C64S emulator, I've got version 3.0 and it even does SID emulation on a shitty PC speaker in DOS not very good but you know it's like the best beeper music actually I was using it on a very bespoke machine it's the size of like a, a VHS cassette it's a laptop it's called the Toshiba <coughs> Libretto anyway So I do know this game, but it's been a long time since I played this. And I saw it on uh, John Gage's uh, channel. This time I did go on the actual channel, or did I just search John Gage Commodore 64 and, uh, you know, past month or something. You know what, I can't remember. I should point out that four of my rolled ups are like two cigarettes. If that, and they keep going out. So I'm all like one now. Oh yeah, I did bring biscuits in here. Not for me, don't be stupid. I can't have any problem with my teeth at the moment. We had a few, uh, you know, big winds in America. You know, as in wind. Yeah, I know it's called Hurricane Ada or whatever. But uh, two fucking uh, days, 48 hours, and uh, 400 fucking people have been killed by COVID. Guess how many milliseconds of, uh, you know, time he spent discussing that, what we're going to do just before the fucking schools open and the colleges open. Ah, yeah, fucking cocksuckers, a lot of them, mate. So, 
so that's not a bad loading picture it's certainly not up to a kick start on the Mastertronic label loading screen which is one of the earliest uh, budget loading screens I remember going wow that's cool that's really nice how much CPU power would I need to have a game with those graphics because obviously the C64 displays those graphics maybe that's what a zoomed in uh, view of uh, you know a kickstart style trials game on the C64 would look like if uh, Commodore had bought the people who made the super CPU I think I have no trainers or anything because then we can actually play the game now this although this is a firebird game it is actually an Activision game and I do believe it was on sale for full price Uh, some of Activision's games are a real nightmare. And uh, speaking of Activision games, the uh, Ghostbusters uh, Christmas special. I don't know if I can call that a Christmas special because fucking Christmas has been cancelled. <sighs> By some miracle, the roll-up didn't go out. So. Uh, I accidentally watched a bit of uh, Ghostbusters. I can accidentally watch a bit of Ghostbusters. Yeah, well, I was looking for uh, clips of them driving uh, Ecto-1. And uh, fuck knows how much it would cost to get one of those. You know, like the toy uh, on eBay now. Fucking 100 quid for uh, one with shit stains on it, probably. Who knows, mate. That's why I haven't started yet. The glow. Put the, oh no, I better not touch the lens. So, uh, yeah, I was looking for a certain scene because I wanted to do a trailer. But now I'm thinking, there is no Christmas. I am in no mood for what is about to happen. Thousands of people are going to die because Boris Johnson is a fucking greedy, selfish cunt. And because uh, most people in this country are thick as shit... And selfish. Just have a fucking world war, will ya? A fucking... Uh, come on, Russia. Big up the Taliban. Come on, go on Taliban's side. And maybe we can have a world war. And maybe I could go to the shops without getting fucking killed, motherfuckers. Black tea is going down well with my black mood. So yeah, anyway, I found this wicked sample loop. Well, I have to make the sample loop. I found a section of a song from the Ghostbusters soundtrack and it would go really well with a foggy night, Ecto-1, with a drone, camera drone following behind. But, you know, that kind of viewpoint. I'm not saying you actually needed a drone. We didn't have drones. In fact, drones of any description are... Possibly the only sci-fi thing these millennial cocksuckers have managed to invent since the 70s. So if you watch the movie Runaway, with Tom Selleck, yeah I know. Uh, you'll see they have fake drones. Now obviously uh, if you watch the 1080p version of that you'll see the wires. <laughs> the so called invisible wires. But uh, yeah, no, they, they could actually remake uh, Runaway and... Uh, you'd have real drones, real camera drones. They wouldn't look as cool as they did in there. They look kind of gangly and shit and, yeah. It's like the difference between Blue Thunder and Airwolf. Yeah, Blue Thunder may be similar in abilities to Airwolf, but Blue Thunder, it looks like a fucking Meccano set. It's uh, unfinished, mate. So I couldn't find it, but... There was like a, a YouTube video of about seven minutes of, uh, you know, Ecto-1 scenes from Ghostbusters 1 and Ghostbusters 2. Spit! I'll never watch Ghostbusters 2. Yes, I'm not even going to explain why. There's two reasons why I will never watch Ghostbusters 2 and they're not the same reasons that 99.99% .99 of people, well, probably 100% of People in the world who don't like Ghostbusters 2 will never watch it again. And I accidentally saw that uh, a fucking 
They, they bought Ecto-1 as a fucking uh, grey primer piece of shit. And it, I'd forgotten all about that. I'm like, fuck you. I've been holding off watching Ghostbusters. I really wanted to watch it the other day. I was really in the mood. And I thought, no. We're going to watch Ghostbusters just before we play the game. Because back then, my memory was so good. When I got Ghostbusters with Rescue on Fractalus for Christmas 1985. Unless one of those games came out in 84. But I don't think it did. I'll let you off uh, this time, game base. You may be right on that one. Um, what the fuck did I get for Christmas 1984 then? In fact, what did I get for Christmas 1983? Christmas... Uh, anyway, I got some games and a Point Master joystick one year. But it uh, could have been 83, I guess. No, I couldn't have, because I had a C64 then. What the fuck would my sister be doing buying me uh, VIC-20 games for my C64? Funny to think that, uh, you know, presents that uh, someone bought you, which they might have just walked into a shop and said, uh, I got a little shit brother, and I need uh, some computer games and things for him for Christmas. Because I'm going to run him over in about five years time. Yeah, anyway, won't go into that one. Uh, and yeah, you know, those kind of things. Rescue on Fractalus and Ghostbusters together. Whilst they weren't the best Christmas present I ever had. They were very high up on the list. Now you got to remember, I never got any consoles or computers for Christmas and by 1982 83 possibly my parents had decided computer games are for children they're toys you know you, you're growing up now you, you're gonna you're gonna be a man soon although technically I was two years earlier anyway I won't go into that um, and I never got any but uh, Rescue on Fractalus and Ghostbusters, it's not just the games, it's not just the atmosphere, it's the whole way it happened, how I played them first, and that's really what the Christmas special is going to be like, although Christmas has been cancelled for people like me, who don't want to die, going out getting a box of mince pies, fuck you Boris Johnson! I hope fucking Boris Johnson uh, gets Harley Quinn's disease. Fuck you, you cunt. And, uh, but the best present I ever had, and it's the second time I'm mentioning this, is uh, Matchbox uh, Race and Chase slot car racing set. It's brilliant. You press a button on the top, the cars will do a U-turn. Sometimes, sometimes they'll fly off the track. But anyway, uh, that was... Quite, you know, that's up there with uh, TCR's lane changing because the TCR cars would change lanes if, if you went round the track too fast as well. It wasn't just, but that was another brilliant thing. Scale Trick was like more of a, yeah, it's more of 60s technology to me as a kid because it was like, well, you can change lanes with this, you can do U turns with this, you get a ramp with Race and Chase. Police car was cool. The Corvette Stingray was cool. Anyway, I couldn't find the clips of uh, what you call it, and uh, I wanted to do a trailer. I wanted to do a trailer for the Ghostbuster special. Even if I never make the Ghostbuster special, which would be very difficult, unless I finish a lot more of my house. Which doesn't appear to happen because I think I'm getting a problem with my uh, wisdom tooth, motherfucker. Why don't you go and get it sorted out then? And uh, I said to my mum, no, the way things are going, I don't fancy sitting in the dentist's office with my fucking mouth open. Whether it's Covid or someone fucking sexually abusing me under anaesthetic. Yes. Neither of those things are particularly uh, welcoming to me. Yeah, I thought I'd go on the news today and... Uh, look, I'm still smoking. Shut up. 
and uh, see some reaction, you know, all 400 dead in uh, 48 hours, fuck you, so much shit on there, 58 people die from a teeny weeny little hurricane, and a bit of extra rain, and uh, you know, the fucking world goes crazy, 400 people die, and no one even talks about it, that's disgusting, that's disgusting and disgraceful to the, uh, you know, the 400 people that died. I don't know why it's looking like that on the camera. It certainly doesn't look like that on the CRT screen. There's some sort of reflection going on there. I did find my CRT glasses. Actually, I better go and get them. You can start clapping and applauding now because uh, I finished my roll up. But hold on, we need to cut glasses in. Maybe that helped the situation a bit. No, it's me that's reflecting the fucking screen. Oh man, what's going on with this camera? E. I was just thinking, should I do a... Yeah, it's not going to do the uh, graphics any justice, but the camera really struggles when the screen is like... You know, it's a black screen. Mostly black background. Okay, joystick port one. No, oh, hang on, it is joystick port one. F1 to start. Oh, luckily we are in the correct joystick port. So this is one of those brilliant early games. I think uh, it's 1984 from Activision. So like these things here, so it's like Bosconia mixed with Stargate because you can walk to new levels, see? And you've got to take out these little bastards, so it's kind of like Thunder Force 2. And you have to take out all of them, actually. Ah, oh, no, I didn't want to do that. Okay, still getting those two controls, so you've got to take out all of them. So they're kind of in a grid pattern. So you need a good joystick for this game because you've got to do like diagonals really. <clears throat> I actually quite like them little rocks there. I think there's some sprite multiplexing going on. So yeah, we've still got the up and down business. I don't know what that is. So you've got inertia like asteroids and stuff. Oh no, you can't crash into them then. Ah oh, well, eat. So you can only get rid of like the things going down until you've shot all of the uh, ones. Oh, let's see, there we go. There you go, see. So it's basically like a grid, so it's like the Tholian web. Oh shit. And you can shoot them. So it's kind of like Asteroids meets Bosconia meets uh, Stargate. It's actually a really nice game. Now where's my energy levels? Do I have like an energy? No, you have time actually. Right. So maybe you can... Uh, maybe you can actually... Um, hang on, why they're still fucking... When you die, do these shits get reset? I believe they do then. Oh. oh, bloody hell. Oh, no. Our time was out there. So, actually... That's a bit of a thing, time does not get reset when you die. Of course it doesn't, Mad Commodore, religion is a load of bollocks, isn't it? Right, so I've done all of them this time. So when it resets the time, don't reset them there, so... Pause. 
possibly the square portal is uh, am I supposed to shoot that? It looks suspiciously like something I'm supposed to shoot. Oh no, oh, do that. Alright. Oh man, between losing a life and uh <laughs> the old uh, time resetting, we're not doing very well. However, right, F1 to restart it. Now, if you're wondering why all these C64 games had, uh, you know, press F1, you know, F3 and all this to do various things, like one player, two player start game, that's because the Atari 800 you know, the reset, select, start, all those kind of uh, buttons. They're on the side of the keyboard. And they're sort of like the uh, Commodore function keys. And for some reason they were like, you know. Ooh. They were making a big thing of the fact that. Oh no. <clears throat> they were making a big thing of the fact that the. Uh, you know, the, the C64 function keys are programmable. So, okay, they haven't reset that time. Maybe they repair themselves. After all that. Oh, yeah, maybe, I think they repair themselves. So it's a real tricky game, actually. So I'm not doing well enough to even understand if I'm doing the right thing playing it. So yeah, that's why a lot of those early C64 games were like that. Especially if they were also on the Atari, which I think this was. So it's easy enough to find the things. You just, you know, follow the uh, energy pulses. I don't know how many you have to actually take out. So yeah, obviously, I didn't watch more than the first minute of the uh, John Gage video because uh, I didn't really want to bias my opinion in any way. Okay. Okay, we yeah, we're going to have to work out what exactly you're supposed to do. Maybe I'm supposed to just take out all the asteroids for all other. Yeah, there was no instructions on the crack, so it's another lame crack. So you probably get about five minutes of time to do whatever it is you're supposed to do. I don't believe you have to take out all them, uh, you know, energy uh, beam generators. Maybe they're just markers, seems a bit silly. There's loads of things I can't shoot. So, you know, I don't know if I'm... Uh, I didn't check out my own video on this game for the same reason. Just wanted to experience it with, like, without seeing it. Right. I like to see the graphics as much as possible on my uh, Sony TV here on my C64. Obviously I didn't have a zip stick back then, but uh, am I supposed to collect it? No! Oh no, that's... So there's no other indication of uh, you know, what we're supposed to do. When you run out of time, time resets, but when you lose your life, time doesn't reset, so I don't really get that. But you lose your life if the time resets. See, I don't know what these things are. Am I supposed to fucking uh, touch them? 
you touch them and you kick them. Maybe I am supposed to take out that thing, but you know, five minutes to take out something like that. So you've got to kind of match their speed, if I'm honest. matching his speed. See, I don't think that is the idea of this game. I don't think shooting them things is the idea either. Because there's a hell of a lot of those. But maybe it is. Who knows, mate? So, yeah. It's an interesting game. It's an early game. Might be really good. Who knows? If you thought my that was a shit review well then obviously you're new to the channel I don't do reviews I give my uh, impressions on games usually for the first time when running them on uh, the real hardware is there a smudge on the camera lens here fuck's sake so We may have had too much Bruce Lee lately. So there was a, a game called uh, Tusari 2, uh, which is a cartridge image only, on that website that has like all the uh, you know modern games, some of which you can download for free. Uh, so I thought I would uh, go looking for uh, Tusari 1, and it turns out it's like from the early 90s. Ah oh, shit, it just said IFL. That's not going to work. I'm saying to do with the uh, loading business. No, it's not going to work. So that hasn't been cracked properly. <clears throat> IFL stands for I am, I am, I'm a fucking loser, cracker. Because uh, they haven't removed uh, the fucking uh, weird loading routines. They've just uh, written over the boot block, put some shit on there. Uh, added some uh, options at least that time. But uh, yeah, they haven't really cracked the game properly. So that only leaves Parsec, which I dis did test. I had to download over 20 versions of this fucking game uh, again this is another one I uh, happened to see uh, John Gage playing and uh, looked quite impressive which reminds me I need to uh, play Scorpius again now who the hell made Scorpius was it players I think it was players Well, it's 28 minutes and 42 seconds, but uh, I don't think I'll go for the uh, Meze files today, what's the point? Now, I do like the idea of the old uh, Premiere business, you could do a lot of things with that. But you need to the wrong glasses. Don't worry, my negative comments about the news today haven't finished. So the other thing they're talking about was uh, changing the law uh, if someone steals your dog. Because dogs are just more than uh, uh, theft of uh, property. And I'm thinking, uh, what about cats then, mate? Although dogs are... Uh,
gonna have to have crack in this one, uh, chunky lad. Don't do it, don't do it, feel like all the little bits of shit. Coming to investigate what's in the uh, pouch. You can have weapons. Did you eat all your dinner? Did you eat all your dinner last night? I don't like that walking tune that everyone uses on the CC people soundtrack. I have never liked that, so uh, yeah. Anyway, today we'll be playing a lot of CC people. So the camera's going to get charged up quite a bit then. Okay. Now what the fuck I'm going to do for the uh, two hours between the uh, charges. files together in the uh, editor so camera can stay on people skip past this bit anyway Right. So on today's menu for me, fuck all, mate. I won't be eating anything today. Although that would mean uh, when I do make the uh, llama tune topping very well marinated by tomorrow unlimited lives uh, yeah we're gonna have to go with yes yes because uh, as you can tell I'm even worse than usual at playing games at the moment and look there was no level skip anyway so we're not gonna get to see all the levels but this is the only crack that works like I said, I downloaded 26 fucking different cracks and this is the only one that worked. On the SD to AC. So yeah, I, was, uh, I did check out that video that uh, Phil mentioned, uh, Shareopolis, uh, you know, C C64 games that push the uh, limits or something. 
It was quite an interesting uh, one actually. Now, Scorpius is a game very few people know, but he did mention the, uh, you know, the column scrolling, which is actually something you have to do the same way you do regular parallax horizontal scrolling on the C64 with uh, redefined character sets on the fly every 50th of a second or every 25th. So that was quite interesting. Um, now he mentioned uh, Flimbo's quest for Parallax which is very good. But I did a detailed thing about how Flimbo's is doing it. There are no jagged bits, everything on the uh, bits that overlap that you can see through that stuff goes behind is like a vertical you know line, it's a hard edge don't even know how you use the bombs use loads of credits I believe this is a Germany only release for uh, the C64. Blood money! There's a whole lot more. Yeah! Yeah! <clears throat> you know what? I played the uh, first disc of Blood Money a lot. The second one where the actual game loads, not much because it's a shit game. Technically, I was looking at that and I was thinking uh, does, uh, does Davy Jones have any major role in the coding of any of the uh, PS2 GTA games? Because he wrote um, Menace <coughs> <coughs> But yeah that was uh, quite a good video Okay Well there's only two bombs So So we didn't have unlimited bombs, did we? Or did we? I think we did. So that ruins the game now. Alright. Well, the contrast is right down to the minimum. The only thing I could do is turn the colour down. And then people would be like, Oh, I see 64 has got washed out palette. Mm. Doesn't matter. Some video recorders had a washed out palette. You turn the fucking colour up on your CRT, mate. It's so dumb when people say that. It's like people saying to me, uh, yeah, go to the shops. Go on, put your face mask on, you'll be safe. No, I won't be fucking safe, mate. Because cunts keep coming up towards you. None of the staff wear face masks, let alone the fucking uh, idiot millennials and their dumb fucking teenage children and shit. Well, that was a waste of time. I nearly finished me uh, roll up. It was about only 25% left. So and we have to load it again. I seem to remember the uh, early 80s and uh, late 70s being colder and darker. Maybe that's just because there was a small window in my bedroom. I don't know. Ceilings were probably about the same height as this house. Well, apart from the sides where it slopes down. Cheap bastards! This house was built while there was a, you know, World War going on. The First World War. Some rich bastard was building this house for himself. So 40 minutes and we played, uh, how many games we, well we attempted to play more than two. Uh, we'll have that, but we won't have that. And we'll have unlimited credits, so we don't need to change anything on the, you not know, a walkthrough, playthrough or anything like that. It's just me, trying not to be killed by this stink virus, messing about with my retro computer gear. This 
it's maybe a four colour game. Zeta Wing is not a four colour game, I know that. Don't know if I'd buy that, that's probably the the one game I might buy. But only after I finished enjoying uh, all the retro games for all the systems that you can download. So it's kind of like, ah, oh, bloody hell. Like rapid fire it is then. So it's, oh man. Yeah, it's kind of like Risk, the, uh, the main game area. The background graphics are just four colour. Ah, oh, bloody hell. This is uh, Mega Drive Thunder Force. Three levels are difficult. So how do you uh, do a power-up? So you can't sort them out. I think we just got a power-up, whether we like it or not. Ah, oh, no, no. S for sound effects, no. So it's just music. So it's not music and sound effects. Very smooth. But because the entire graphics seem to be the same four colours for the background, only the sprites are different colours. And for some reason your sprite's got green on it. Uh, maybe it goes blue when you're shooting them. No. Okay. So this is a fiendishly difficult game. However, the game controls are f absolutely fine. <coughs> so regardless of how colour starved the uh, background graphics are on a lot of C64 games. Can't fire off the bomb. I don't know how you fire off the bomb. Maybe you need a joystick plugged into joystick port 1 and pressing fire because pressing space does nothing. And I'm guessing it would help a lot if you had like one of those smart bombs. But is that not the end of the level then? So it's a very impressive bit of coding. Except for the fact there's not enough colours on the screen. For the background. I really don't like that anymore. That's a real put off for me. Now with Risk, you know, because the background isn't solid black as well, it, you know. But Risk has got a lot to uh, fit in and I think this is a multi-load game. Well, I'm not sure, actually. Now if it isn't a multi-load game and there's lots of, like, levels of four colour backgrounds, then, uh, yeah, maybe. Pressing fire there, see if I could get the uh, bomb to activate. Right, maybe we've got to take out all of these first. They don't seem to be. Uh... Okay, you have to get them in the right bloody order. It's a really tricky game actually. Why are you not killing them there? So there's no indication that I'm <coughs> sorting them out. So the game engine itself is coded uh, as well as Delta. Although you don't move quite as fast as, uh, you know, that, that seems like the scrolling is happening faster in that game. So this could be the end of level Buckhead. See, they're not flashing or anything, so I don't know if I'm actually taking him out. Those orbs are flashing, I don't know if I have to get them first. Shooting him in the eye, maybe, perhaps. Not really, that's, that's not helping at all.
man, I could really do with a Commodore key for level skip. I don't have the patience for these uh, end of level bosses anymore. Not, not for every single game that I try out. You know, maybe a game I really like playing is fine, but... Uh, Ah, uh, speaking of which, I'm not sure I've actually got Lilac Wars, which is uh, the N64 version of Sky Fox in the UK. There is actually a game called, uh, sorry, Star Fox. Uh, there is actually a game called Star Fox on the C64. Alright, I was right, so you've got to take out them stupid orbs. Now what? Not nuclear roll. Yeah, it is a multi-load game, so <clears throat> Risk is not a multi-load game, and there's a hell of a lot to fit in there. That is a huge game. It's probably one of those games that uses most of the C64 memory, almost all of it. Let's see what uh, four color things you come up with this time in it. So you only get one lot of music, so I'm marking it down for that. That's like nemesis levels of, uh, you know. If you want to make an arcade shoot em up, each level has to look wildly different. Very, uh, you know, not very colourful, but it certainly shouldn't look anemic like this. And there should be like music for each level, which helps the atmosphere. Which is why Nemesis is so great. There's loads of different music on it. Nemesis is like a 1985 game. It came out before the uh, Amiga 1000 was it ever put on uh, some weird bespoke shop shelves. And they wonder why it didn't sell. Mm. So more loading, so yeah, no, if you're going to do a multi-load, then having uh, just four colour backgrounds is not even using colour RAM to have the uh, complete BBC Micro palette with some greys or browns and or. Only one set of music potentially per level, we'll see. No, well, this bit sounds the same. Okay, graphics have improved a bit, but not much. And by improved, I just mean there's less uh, solid black in the background. Although everything else is like three shades of grey. Like... This game would be brilliant if you had a black and white TV. So they can only uh, achieve this sort of quality using just four colours for the background. Now armor light does change the colors occasionally here and there. Most of the time it is just four colors on the background, which is why I don't like armor light either. Because I don't like the music on armor light, armor light as much as the music on um, Delta. Delta doesn't really have backgrounds. Those bits that scroll by, the entire game is done with uh, sprites. I think the only thing that's background graphics is the uh, star field. So, the feels like I'm playing Dragon's Lair on the NES rather than the shoot them up in space. So again, why didn't they change the colours to blue here? Why? Anyway, if they've done it blue and grey, I don't know what they were thinking mate, I really don't. So I may actually be improving at this game. Seem to be losing lives uh, less frequently. He says just as he blows up. Fuck's sake. Could really do with some uh, eight-way shots here. So these sprites are completely ripped off of uh, Delta. So 
That was a close one. <clears throat> yeah, it's a shit level. I don't like the graphics on this level. However, we'll keep going. Maybe it improves. If the camera doesn't run out of time, we're at just under 51 minutes now. Uh, then uh, I will keep going until we get to another level. It's just terrible. The background graphics are horrible. They're shit. And the rest of the game is quite nice. Ah, oh, no, that's a real cunt, that is. How am I supposed to get through there, then? Yeah, whatever, mate. Oh, no, they've gone away now. Ah, oh, bollocks. So the sprite coding is nice, background coding is shit. And we'll leave it at that. <clears throat> yeah, I mean, why are those uh, ships just floating there doing nothing? That's just bullshit. So, four colours only on the background. Terrible choice of colours for the palette. And one of those colours is black, so that's always shit. Now, fuck off. Right, you piss off, mate. Yeah, the flames are nice. They're the only thing that are a different colour. Are, are they sprites? So the end of level bosses are not bad, but... You know, the background graphics are a real put-off. That just puts me right off that does. They're what I would call paperboy graphics back then as in C64 version of Paperboy. We didn't know why it was shit, but we knew the graphics on the backgrounds were shit, when they shouldn't have been that shit. And that's the reason. That's more for the 1983, possibly 84, Tony Crowford era. I don't really think I need that much of a delay. Just leave this fucking stats up and start loading or something. So yeah, this has turned out to be a real disappointment. It's as hard as IO, it looks more shit than IO in the background. Oh great, we've got more fucking great, oh hang on. This is a bit we have to get through, isn't it? This is like a warp stage. It's no super stardust, mate, as far as warp stages go. Hell. Sounds a bit like Rambo there. You know what I can't be bothered to do anymore. Get on with it. Wee! Oh, bloody hell. Oh, and we nearly actually done it. So this game is really difficult. And if you're going to play a difficult game, just just go and play Sanction. I don't know what the uh, technical thing is that uh, Stavros Vasoulas did that he then turned into uh, Sanction. I know Delta was uh, making a shoot 'em up using just the sprites for everything. And it is highly impressive for what he does. Everything is a sprite except for the Starfield. The scores at, at the top border, the stuff in the bottom border, you know, the uh, <clears throat> the little bits with the uh, water waves animating as they go across, like the actual top and bottom of the C64 screen, not in the border. And the actual sprites and everything that moves is very impressive. However, 
when you play Delta, you think just have some background graphics as well on top of that, even if it's these kind of graphics. So yeah, this is one of those games that look great in the old screenshots because they had to take photographs of uh, screens back then to do screenshots, you know, with an actual analog camera, film camera. So yeah, there's no different music. I think the different music not being there for each level and uh, you know, the, the four colors only for everything on the uh, background graphics anywhere on the screen. I think all of that together is just, nah, I wouldn't recommend this game to anyone. Because most shoot em ups on the C64 are difficult simply because very easy for it to do these uh, you know 50 frames per second game engines there's quite a few shoot em ups that do that oh, bloody hell what am I doing I don't think you can actually shoot them or well, you can shoot some of them that's annoying before they weren't so yeah it's got as much uh, sprites on the screen as uh, R-Type 3 on the SNES and it doesn't have the slowdown of R-Type 3 on the SNES or is it Gradius 3? I can't remember There is actually a Gradius 3 arcade game but I don't know if it's a, a backport of the uh, SNES arcade one that Konami did or because there is a version of Thunder Force in the arcade however it doesn't have my favourite level so I don't like it a bit of a pity anyway so yeah there are odd color choices why why is my ship green as well I mean you know gray and blue would go or gray and even turquoise but with the sprites you don't have the BBC micro palette problem Yeah, so I think we've got like full power-ups. Uh, I think you're supposed to like whiz through, so... Yeah, it's, it's no difficult to things like Delta, Armor Light, uh, IO. Uh, see, the graphics would have been nice if they'd used more than uh, three colors plus black. They would have looked brilliant actually, but they don't, they look shit the way they've done them. Am I supposed to shoot? Ah, oh, bastard. Uh, I think Zynaps may be another, another shoot em up that's difficult, Salamander definitely. So there's no real reason why you should have spent, you know, fucking 45 minutes trying to find a version of this game that works on the SD to AC. Yeah, you, know, you would have seen this uh, with these kind of screenshots, although it was never released uh, in the UK. Uh, and, uh, what the hell? Oh shit. That's confusing, that is. Uh, and because of the way they take screenshots back then, you would have thought it was great. When you get it, you're like, well, the backgrounds are a bit samey. It's a technical term. I don't know what's worse. The C64 having such a shit screen mode, or the fact that 90% of fucking games use it. Ah, bollocks, we're on the wrong side here. So yeah, go back to school, Mr. Coder. Learn how to use fucking colour around your cunts. That's what I've got to say on this subject. The end! Times perfectly.